I'm John Skinner and this supports chapter 11 in my book Fishing the Bucktail and the book covers bucktailing for a variety of species from surf, kayak, and boat. So this video is going to give a really incredible look at um, underwater fluke behavior, fluke also known as flounder, and um, I'll fill in the details as I go along. All right, so I've got a very slow drift here, um, and I'm dragging bait strips, and it's not on a bear hook. It's actually on, uh, it's called a fluke candy teaser. came from uh, Jigging World in uh, northern New Jersey, and uh, you, know, you don't just put the camera down and get great video. I went through trying a couple of things and um, getting these fish to hit, and that particular teaser's worked very well. Sometimes I tipped the teaser with uh, a strip of fluke, uh, cut from a legal fluke, and uh, other times a strip of sea robin. I've used bluefish, a variety of things. Um, and uh, we're going to see some interesting stuff. So if you've ever dead sticked for fluke, that is, you put a rod in a rod holder and you're drifting along and um, and the rod's sitting there, you don't think you have a fish, and then you pick it up, and lo and behold, there's weight on the other end, there's a fish. It's exactly what's going on here, and, and I've got now hours of this kind of video, and I've seen this over and over. And what they do is they grab the bait, and they then swim forward with it. And I can tell you, up in the boat, um, I don't know that I have a fish on. Now, the camera rig is not... Um, you know, it's definitely going to dampen some of the activity on the other end because I'm, I'm really rigged up to try to have stability of the camera. But, um, yeah, you know, this fish is going to go along with the rig and um, really not give an indication at the surface that there's a fish on. Uh, it, it says a lot for holding on to the rod to feel what's down there. Okay, this video is shot with a water wolf camera. One of the stores that carries it both online and uh, in the store is J&H Tackle Oakdale, Long Island. Numerous times throughout this video, you're going to see me... Well, that looks good. Uh, you're going to see me lose fish that it looks like I should have hooked. Uh, the hook on these teasers is razor sharp. It's really an excellent teaser. That's why I use them. Uh, but again, the way the camera rig is set up, um, it's definitely... Uh, much less than optimal for hooking the fish and also um, on the surface even when I feel something like at this point I feel something and, and I'm starting to reel this fish in and I lose them but I'm not setting the hook because I'm trying to minimize the camera shake so uh, you know, you're gonna see me drop a lot of fish here that you know normally you would get but um, also you're gonna see that um, you know these fish hold on to it for a while and if you don't set the hook even with a razor sharp hook, you're not going to hook them. So uh, there's definitely something to be learned there. All right, off to the left, out of the frame, I'm also uh, jigging with a bucktail, and you're going to get to see that in a minute. It will get into the frame at times, many times on this video. And like I said, I've watched hours of this now, many, many times. The fish pass on the real meat. They pass on the bait strip. They go for the bucktail, and that's what you just saw there. When those three fish all bolted in the same direction, without a doubt, they're going after the bucktail rig, because I know that's where the bucktail rig is. There's a hit to the camera, actually. Hit the camera. Um, and, uh, you know, this is one of the fish that didn't get the bucktail, probably, and uh, it came back over to the bait. Okay, when I mentioned bucktailing, uh, the other rod, uh, I'm fishing light tackle uh, bucktailing, and so it's a one-ounce uh, bucktail. And the teasers, I use two different kinds of teasers. Both are tsunamis. One is uh, a hollow teaser, and that's what I'm using. You'll be seeing in a second off to the left. And I use that when the current is fairly slow. When the current's a little bit faster, I use the glass minnow teaser. And both of those work great. Both the bucktail and the teasers are tipped with 4-inch Berkeley Gulp Alive swimming mullets. Now, when I normally fluke fish, you know, when I'm not trying to get video like this, 
I don't even fish any bait. I just fish the gulp and the bucktails. That's uh, you're seeing those jigging off to the left, and um, you know, just from years of fluke fishing, um, I find that the bucktails just outproduce the meat strips by a very wide margin. But to get this video, um, you can't really be jigging the camera. You'd have too much bouncing. So um, I'm, I've got the meat strip out. And on my channel I have numerous videos showing light tackle fluke bucktailing, uh, both the technique and the rigging. This is a real treat. Uh, look above the bait and slightly to the right and here he comes. Now oh, that's cool. Alright, so this squid is grabbed onto that and uh, he's going to hang on for a couple of minutes. And then after a couple of minutes uh, now uh, he's uh, he's turned real dark. He's gotten nervous, so he's changed color, and uh, now he's letting go. And why is he doing that? And uh, well, it's for a good reason because he's now been dragged into an area where there's several fluke. And here comes one smoking over towards the bucktail. He's got the lower uh, he's got the lower bucktail, and um, you know, here comes another fish up. He kind of looks at the strip. No, both fish are now chasing the bucktail, and uh, one of them's finally going to get caught on that. All right, so that leaves a fish that didn't get the bucktail. And during this trip, most of the time when I caught a fish on the bait strip, it was at a time when the bucktail rod was out of the water. I might have been unhooking a fish or whatever I was doing, but the bucktail wasn't down. And um, you know, when it was just the bait strip down, that's when it tended to catch fish. Of course, one of the most important aspects of catching fish is to uh, find them and. Uh, yeah, in this case, this is uh, Long Island Sound. Usually the fish are on sand eels. The sand eels aren't in yet. The fluke are not in their traditional places. If you've seen my underwater videos before, uh, normally it's over a clean sand bottom. Um, in this case, I've had to go in on structure. I've had to get into places where I know there's uh, other things they're feeding on. Little shrimp, little crabs. Of course, the squid are in there. Boy, I have found the fish. There's five fish in that frame. Um, so this is pretty exciting for me to see you know, all this life that's down there. All right, some serious structure there. Uh, part of a wreck, I suppose. All right, you can tell I just dropped the bucktail to the left out of the frame because all those fish just bolted over there. Uh, yeah, the, the bucktail just really draws them. And there's uh, another part of the wreck, or a different one, I don't know. So I've fluke fished a lot of years and I've never used stinger hooks or I've used them but uh, I've tried them but um, I, I don't like using them and uh, the reason is I've never felt that they uh, increase my catch and a stinger hook is a, a second hook that you would run uh, towards the end of a long bait and in this case you know I'm, I'm running pretty large strips uh, that's probably I don't know seven sometimes eight inches long and you know the thought of the stinger hook is if the fish hits just the tail end you'll still hook them um, I, I never felt that that was true and now after watching a few hours of this kind of video um, you know it really kind of reinforces my thoughts that it's it's not going to increase my catch as I watch these hits these fluke hits are absolutely violent they take the whole bait the large bait boom one shot very fast and we see numerous times where the fish will um, come up close to the bait look at it very closely but 
I've not yet seen an instance where they then just grab onto the tail at that point. If they're going to hit it, uh, most of the time they sort of drop down below it and then come up and hit in one shot, um, something like, like this. And um, actually what you just saw there was the fish that got released from the surface. But uh, they come up and boom, one shot, it's gone. Uh, a stinger hook isn't going to do anything except, uh, you know, maybe interfere with the nice action. Um, and here we go again with the fish <laughs> right up to the camera. Um, following along with the rig. Now this fish is going to go nuts and you know it's clearly it, it, you would think it feels that it's hooked but the segment here it's gonna like the bait's gonna come out of his mouth and within an instant it's gonna go back and grab it right there and grabs it again. Uh, just amazing that uh, you know they don't spook off. It's you would think you lose the fish. It's not going to come right back. Boy, as soon as that thing came out of its mouth, it was right back on it. It's pretty remarkable. Apparently, up on the surface, I don't even know I've got this fish yet because I haven't started reeling them in. There we go. Okay, so I hope you uh, found this video as enlightening as I did. It was uh, sure pretty exciting for me to watch for the first time. You, know, you, you load the uh, card into the computer and you start playing and you don't know what you have down there. And I can tell you from up on the surface, uh, there were drifts where if you asked me, you know, what I did on the bait rod, I'd tell you, well, I, you know, I had a hit or two, or you know, I lost a fish and. Yeah, there was so much more going on down there than I thought, so I thought it was very interesting. Okay, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to my channel.